My name is Dominique Kiefer. And I'm Robert Kiefer, and we together run Divine Science Brewing, Southern California's first 100% gluten-free brewery. Excellent. Okay, so you got your 30 seconds. Go for it. Okay, great. Uh, well, we are, as I mentioned, Southern California's first 100% gluten-free brewery. And our goal is to one day become the Heineken or, you know, Carlsberg, if you will, of gluten-free beer being distributed worldwide um, in a context that allows people to have access not only to great tasting beer, but beer that has a little bit better effects on their gut than, say, barley-based beverages. The problem right now is that consumers are looking for a lighter product that isn't so hard on their digestive tract and doesn't have to have them worried about chronic illness or type 2 diabetes or just extra weight gain. And so, so it's just, it's your time went up. So let's, let's, let's take it from there. So I got, I got the gist. So, so give me an idea of like, so how far along are you? How, how much traction have you made with this? We just did our two year mark and you can currently find us statewide in California in Total Wine as well as Bevmo. And we are looking to have Whole Foods online by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Okay, so talk about your distribution again. Like, I, like so how far? Like... So we currently self-distribute across California from down in San Diego County to as far up as Santa Clarita, Chico County, um, even in South Lake Tahoe. Uh, we are widely across the California basis in BevMo, in Total Wine, and we are going to be adding Whole Foods very shortly. Awesome, so how far along are you with Whole Foods? Um, we've had a couple emails so far, um, but just getting any word back pretty much means that we're going to be an, a, a shoe in. Well, we have a direct link to the actual buyer, as opposed to, say, being trapped in their system, if you will. Yes, yes. I'm talking directly to the buyer already. Got it. So, what, so let's take a step back. So what makes this beer unique? Obviously, it's a niche play. Is there anybody else doing this, like this type of beer that's gluten-free? Because I thought beer was based on gluten or so. I'm not, I'm not a, like expert. Yeah. But... yeah, no, no. You're on the right start. <laughs> well, uh, you are talking to one of the experts because I am currently contracted under Brewers Publications to write the first book on gluten-free brewing. Excellent. So the, 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 the secret is, is using ingredients that don't contain gluten. Um, which is a much more variety than those that contain gluten. But basically we use ingredients like rice, millet, buckwheat, corn, um, lentils, oats, all sorts of other ingredients. We start without the gluten, which makes it a gluten-free beer. And that's something that the FDA recently put their foot down on, saying that all these gluten-reduced beers, they can no longer be labeled gluten-free or advertised as gluten-free if the ingredients contain gluten before hydrolysis. Wow, that's fascinating. So why aren't any of the big guys doing this? Like, obviously, there's, there's this well, massive... Well, yeah, industry. we can walk you through it. So, uh, yeah. I mean, a lot of brands have gone in the seltzer direction because of the, the fact that they don't really understand all of the brewing science related to it. If you look at Redbridge, which is a sorghum-based beer that's produced by Anheuser-Busch InBev, they um, aren't really doing much with the art. And most people that try it, um, assume that there is no possible way to make gluten-free beer taste good because if Anheuser-Busch can't do it, well, then it must be impossible. Um, now, we all know that Anheuser-Busch isn't necessarily branded with having the best tasting beer in the world. So it's kind of no wonder that they wouldn't necessarily make the best tasting product, especially since they're focused on the cost of the product more than the actual quality of the product. The cost is a major um, area to entry for a lot of people brewing gluten-free because it's four times the cost and twice as hard. At least that's what we say in the gluten-free brewing community because our grains are literally four times the cost of barley. And if you don't get it right, all that money goes down the drain. And a lot of these people aren't willing to take that step. Got it. So let's talk about the numbers. So like, how have you funded it so far? Have you raised any capital or self-funded? How have you done it? So far we've been self-funded. Yeah, this is this kind of thing. I work a paid job as a cybersecurity recruiter for a cybersecurity consultancy. And so uh, my commissions and my salary have gone into funding the startup costs, the recipes, and other things like that that have gone into that. Obviously, the R&D and all that stuff that came before it as well. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. So how much are you guys looking to raise now? Our goal in our seed round is $250,000, uh, which will allow us to not only have the capital on hand, but allow us to also be able to tap into larger um, you know, institutions 
whether those be additional VC investors or angels or potentially uh, actual lending institutions like banks and things like that. The most important thing for us right now is being in charge of the quality of our product. We're currently using contract brewers to get our product to market. And it has been effective at getting the product on the market. But in terms of growing the brand to the size that we know it can be, it's been a little bit difficult to get the scaling correctly, uh, primarily because you're always going to be second to the contract brewer schedule and whatever they are currently in production with, specifically their own beers. And so for us, yeah, the focus is controlling that. Gotcha. So in terms of like, what do you see the investors getting their money back? Um, we see getting your money back within three to five years. Um, we'll be using it towards building our own facility uh, and basically launching statewide campaigns because then we'd have the production capabilities to say, hey, we want to do an aisle stack. We've been in Total Wine for over a year, so that'd be the first one that I go out to about aisle stacks. Um, when we first had our meeting with them, they didn't even try the beer. They just said, oh, it's gluten-free? Okay, we'll take it. Wow, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we also have done work with Disneyland, which unfortunately they're closed, but they're on our docket. <laughs> yeah, so which begs the question, like, but there's not really a barrier stopping competitors from coming after this though, is there? There's no books well, on there's there's brewing. no there's no really barrier to entry in beer in yeah. it itself. The biggest separating factor in beer is the ability to get it to the customer and for wherewithal. Got it. So what do you, what would you consider your competitive advantages? Because that like your pitch is great. I love everything you guys are doing. It's that's an awesome niche. Everyone's doing these hyper niche things, and I Thanks. love that. I love that concept. The concern I would have with something like this is the is the standing out. Like say. Budweiser says, okay, we're going after these guys. We're going to start our gluten-free. Like, what's what's going to make you guys, you guys will be maybe first to market, which is awesome, but yeah. that only lasts so long. So what's going to be the differentiator for you? 